um, is by Pei Ling Wang at the University of Victoria. Um, and it will still stay on the terrestrial domain and like look at quantifying land use impacts. Thank you for having me here. My name is Peiling Wang. Uh, I'm very excited to share with you part of our very big project. I work with Professor Johannes Fadema uh, at University of Victoria. So we want to quantify uh, uh, human-induced soil degradation. So we know uh, human activities depend a lot on soil and we also constantly change soils all the time. And that affects soil water holding capacity and infiltration rate. And as a result, it will affect uh, water energy and biogeochemical cycles. We know this from a lot of small scale studies. However, in most of the earth system models, despite the land use and land cover changes in the history, the soil properties in those models often stay constant and that will affect model projections and impact assessments. So that's why we would like to fill, the, uh, fill in this missing piece to put the soil degradation model. So the first question we ask is what type of soils do we like? So to make the uh, question easier, we group different types of soil into four groups based on the hydrological potential. So group A is more sandy and soil group D is more clayey. And then we want to see what type of soil is the best. So we introduce, uh, we look at the main major land uses and land cover and we rank those land use and land cover in, by its importance to human beings. So the most important land use is cropland, then is pasture land, grazing, secondary vegetation, and the primary vegetation. Then the next step, we overlaid globally those land use land cover with the distribution of different type of soils. Then we count how much portion of each land use locate in each type of soil group. And if the soil get more important land uses, then we consider it's a more important soil. So the result we find uh, soil group B, the loamy soil is the most important one, followed by clayey soil, uh, sandy clay loam, and the sandy soil is the the least preferred soil for human use. So once we get that, if we get a data, a map in, in a single grid, we know the portions of this much of land use land cover in this grid. And we know they are this much of different type of soil in this grid. Then we can link land use with soil based on the most important land use is located on the best soil and the uh, least important land use on poor soils. So we can do this for globally. So this is an example, we allocate land use land covers in 850 on four different groups of soils. So as you can see, Soil B is the best soil, so you can see most of the agriculture and the pasture located in the best soil. While soil A is poor soil, so in 850, most of the soil A is stay is remain untouched. So using the same uh, methodology, we can do this for the uh, land use uh, for, for the time history from A50 to 2015 based on the land use and land cover history. So we allocate land use land cover to four types of soil and you can see as time goes soil B has a lot of increases in important land use of 
uh, cropland and pasture. And soil A, although it's a poor soil, under the, the population growth, soil A, we start to see more and more human land uses. So if you are interested to know more of the detail, we just published this in Global Biogeochemical Cycles. So the next question we want to ask is how soil properties are changed by land use land covers. Here we focus on soil organic carbon texture and bulk density because those properties affect uh, soil hydrological properties. So to, do, to answer this question, I read more than 1000 papers and tried to collect observations of soil samples under primary vegetation and disturbed uh, condition. And because I only want observations from comparing to soil that's never be disturbed. And most of the studies, they look at so compared to soil on the secondary vegetation, which is uh, being disturbed in the past. So I end up have 140 papers with 700 pair observations. And in addition to the soil data from the literature, we also include a global data set of MPP and moisture index. So these figures, we plot uh, soil organic carbon change along with death under four different uh, land use land covers. And then we calculate the average at, uh, at each soil layer. So we, have, we define seven layers here. And for each layer, we have an average to represent the different land use impact. And we can see how the impact change along with death. Then with lead, we also include the environmental factors such as MPP. Then we do a forward modeling to see how land use, MPP, and the soil texture can affect soil organic carbon change. So this is the model we come up to predict soil organic carbon change based on uh, human land use, MPP, and the clay content of the soil. So this model can nicely explain how the soil organic carbon change varies under different land use and in, under different environment. And then with this model, you can see the soil organic carbon change decreases with increasing clay content and the change is also a, a negative change in soil organic carbon decreases with increasing MPP. So with the similar methodology, we also use that to, def to build models to predict how sand, seal, clay, and soil bulk density change under various uh, human land use and land covers. So with that, now we have a couple of models that can be used to predict soil property change under different land use land cover and on in different environmental conditions. So the application of the results first is we can use that to conduct impact assessment of land use land, land use under different environments. And then we want to incorporate uh, land use land cover history to model human induced soil degradation over time. Then finally, we want to uh, uh, apply the soil states we got from the human soil degradation model into the earth system models to estimate the impact of soil degradation on climate. So that is my presentation. Thank you.